just one problem. Which type of engineering should I choose? That was actually a big question I had. You have what it takes to become a software engineer. And you stare at a computer screen for hours and hours <laughs> and, and hours. hours. I'm not joking. She's not joking. If you do decide to do software engineering, you will do a lot of algorithms. There is discrete mathematics and you will be staring at a com computer screen for hours. What's going on everybody? It's Jovan E. Hien, and today I'm talking about which type of engineering should you choose. So I made a video about this and since I already have an undergraduate degree in optical engineering and I'm getting a graduate master's degree in electronics engineering and I'm an optoelectronics engineer right now, I think I'm pretty good at choosing or discerning whether or not <laughs> what she's saying makes sense um but i'm not gonna waste any more time um let's get into it and let's decide what type of engineering should you choose this is me at 18 years old i've just decided to become an engineer there's just one problem which type of engineering should i choose that was actually a big question i had because i always knew i wanted to be an engineer but you don't really know what type of engineering you want to choose until you learn what every type of engineering actually does. But let's not waste any more time. There are so many different types out there. Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, <laughs> engineering industrial engineering, civil engineering. <laughs> With no clear handbook for how to choose my engineering major, I did the next best thing, which was to wing it and just choose one. No! The right one. This is me now at 27. I am on a mission to stop this. So I carefully devised a simple three-step plan. First, I needed to clone myself five times. Second, I needed to make each clone become a different type of engineer. And third, I needed to travel back in time with all my clones and teach my younger self what I had learned. Which brings me back to this moment. Oh, no! This is an intervention. I'm future you as a mechanical engineer. You'll meet the others later, but there's no time to explain. All you need to know is that we're helping you figure out the right type of engineering for you. So you better pay close attention. And I'll start with mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering is one of the broadest types of engineering, which is why there's hardly ever a situation where we don't feel compelled to say, trust me, I'm an engineer. If you liked <laughs> physics in high school, this is the type of engineering that'll come closest to it. You'll learn a lot about all different kinds of physics like mechanics, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, and electrical science. You'll also- Yeah, mechanical engineering is also the number one chosen field of engineering. And if you're interested in working with your hands primarily, and you really like hardware a lot, definitely go into well, I'm not going to say definitely, but you should strongly consider mechanical engineering. Also, it's one of the safest fields of engineering, meaning that everywhere needs a mechanical engineer. Whether you work in the defense sector or you want to work for Apple on this side of the world or that side of the world, every single field needs some level of mechanical engineering. Very, very broad field, meaning that you're going to learn a lot about a lot you're gonna learn a little about electronics a little about or a lot about hardware about structures about physics so yeah definitely a good field to choose also learn some basics of computer science robotics material science and production technology especially focus on metals and metal processing there are many subdisciplines of mechanical engineering like aerospace engineering robotics and biomedical engineering. Some universities offer these as specialized study programs, but unless you're dead set on one of these, I recommend to just start with a general mechanical engineering degree and specialize later. My time here is running out. Just remember to always appreciate things that move and always, always carry duct tape with you. She's all yours. Gotcha. If engineering and business had a baby, it would be called industrial engineering. Hi, nice to meet you. Time is money. As I was saying, industrial engineering is like a mashup between engineering and different business disciplines, which also means we're the cool ones among the engineers. Among the engineers. We are the cool ones of the nerds, if you will. To make this time efficient, I've prepared a PowerPoint presentation 
The engineering side of industrial engineering is typically focused on mechanical engineering, although there are also some programs that combine business with other engineering disciplines like software engineering or chemical engineering. The business side includes economics, management, quality management, manufacturing, logistics, and production plans. So this all boils down to if you know you want to get into a manufacturing business or like you say, it's quality management, production management, if you know that that's your goal and you still want to be an engineer, then I strongly suggest industrial engineering because not only can you work in business, you will also have, to an extent, a level of engineering knowledge where you can do both effectively. So unless you want to be, or if you're, if you want to be an engineer, but you don't want to be math heavy and physics heavy and I guess hardware, software heavy, but you want to more focus on the way businesses operate, manufacturing, manufacturing processes, uh, quality management, if it, uh, and all these type of things, then definitely go the industrial engineering route. Some people might say industrial engineering is not real engineering, and to those haters, you say your project is unfortunately over budget and therefore <laughs> declined. Get it? Because you'll be their boss. Joking. A little bit. Okay, there is some truth to the statement. Because you learn both engineering and business, you obviously can't go as much into detail as you otherwise would, but you'll be really valuable in positions where you need to connect the two. So it all depends on what you want. If you want to be an engineer, you want to create your own designs, you want to learn all the basics of math and physics behind it, then don't do industrial engineering. Instead, do a full on engineering degree and read this book for a basic understanding of business. But if you see yourself as this person that can sit at the interface of engineering and business and you don't really want to specialize in either field, it's the combination of the two that really excites you, then go do industrial engineering. Obviously, industrial engineering is a very niche field of study, as, although it may not seem very niche. And the reason I say that is because she made a good point. You won't necessarily be an expert in either. You won't be an expert at mechanical engineering and you also won't be an expert at business with just your degree. So you're kind of right in the middle of both. But if that's your goal, then definitely look at this approach too. I'm up here. I prefer to always keep an overview, you know? As a civil engineer, I spend a lot of time on construction sites because I design civil structures like buildings, bridges, and tunnels. And I need to make sure my designs are being built the right way. Fun fact, the word civil engineer was first used in the year 1750 to differentiate engineers working on civil projects from military engineers working on armaments and defenses. Okay. Another fun fact, civil engineering is, one of, is basically the founding father of engineers. And I actually worked as a civil engineer or geotechnical engineer geotechnical engineer when i was before i entered my undergrad uh, and this is why i chose electronics engineering because civil you work with a lot of dirt and you're outside a lot but if that's what you want to do then by all means you probably will have a lot of fun uh you will be outside more than likely you will at least get to see what you're building come into fruition so that's a really good thing about civil engineering and depending on where you work, it can have an amazing work-life balance because what civil engineers do is design structures and a lot of designs can be done on AutoCAD or they can be done on, is it AutoCAD? I think it's AutoCAD, but they can be done on your laptop. Although if you are a civil engineer, you will have to live within proximity to your job, of course, because you're going to have to be on base and look at what you're designing. But definitely can be a pretty cool field if you like to go outside, you don't mind wearing a hard hat, you don't mind, mind climbing the heights and seeing what you're building, um, or working on roads or working on slopes. If you don't mind that, then definitely choose or look into civil engineering. Okay, you don't need to remember that, but you should know this. Compared to mechanical engineering where things are usually supposed to move, in civil engineering, things are usually not supposed to move. That's why some people may say that civil engineering is easier than other types of engineering. And yeah, the math and physics you need for things that move is a little more complex than the math you need for buildings that don't move, hopefully. But civil engineering still has its challenges. 
For example, we need to know a lot about material science, land development, and the rules and regulations surrounding building construction. And humans. Any idiot can use what we design. So we always need to account for human behavior. And we have a lot of responsibility. We literally shape the world we live in. All right, we're done here. You can go there next. Just make sure to knock. And remember, always stay safe on site and don't forget the humans in your equations. <laughs> Software engineering. Obviously, in today's world, this is probably the most popular type of engineering. I've been expecting you. So you want to learn about software engineering? Software engineering is a systemic approach to software development. It is not the same as coding. Coding is a part of software engineering, but there's also a lot of math, software architecture, and algorithms. Do you have what it takes to become a software engineer? Can you stare at a computer screen for hours and hours? <laughs> And hours. and hours i'm not joking she's not joking if you do decide to do software engineering you will do a lot of algorithms there is discrete mathematics and you will be staring at a com computer screen for hours she said it's not necessarily coding uh, it is coding you'll be coding a lot learning how codes work learning how algorithms work and how you can apply mathematics primarily discrete mathematics to coding or two problems basically as a software engineer as everyone knows you'll be solving software issues or producing software applications so if that's your goal and you are very serious about software then yeah of course go into software engineering for engineering is not like the other types of engineering because no, you're not. not designing physical products you're making software now here are some useful sentences for your future as a software engineer. I recommend to keep them handy at all times. It worked yesterday. It works fine on my computer. It's not a bug, it's a feature. It's never done that before. Is the network cable plugged in? And my personal favorite, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> Thank you for your attention. You may go now. I love that she said that because when you start getting into software, electronics, mechatronics, um, op optics, all these type of engineering um, things that take electrons or electricity to function, things start getting a little weird when you, when you get there. It's very different from civil engineering or industrial engineering where sometimes what you're building just doesn't work it just does not work when you're coding something sometimes it just doesn't work this doesn't happen all the time there's always systemic approaches you can take when you're coding or building a circuit always but it just gets kind of strange and this is my field of engineering she's about to do electronics hey over here Sorry, hi, I'm just setting up the network. I'm an electrical engineer, yeah. Electrical engineering is all about equipment, devices, and systems that use electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism. Yep. So things like computers, cars, planes, phones, and pretty much everything in your home that runs on electricity. But we also design the electrical networks that run through your home and pretty much all other buildings. Yeah, you do need a lot of math and logic. It's probably the most math intensive type of engineering you can study, but don't tell chemical engineering I said that. And unlike disciplines like mechanic engineering where you can really see the things you're working with, you can't really see electrons move through a wire. So you need to be able to deal with the abstract, but it's also really cool what you can do with it. We literally have 
the world power. <laughs> I love that she said that because a lot of what you're dealing with with electronics is extremely abstract. Like I said, it's very different from civil engineering where you can see what you're building. Sometimes things get weird and when you deal with more complex issues or complex circuits or problems, initially you don't know why things don't work. You can't just see it. It's something happening in what you built that just isn't there that, that the eyes can see, which requires, a, in my opinion, an extremely high level of critical thinking and an uh, extremely high degree of problem solving and patience. <coughs> this is not what Kemi Kendrion is like most of the time, but it looks better for the video. Chemical engineers design and develop chemical manufacturing processes. You obviously should be interested in chemistry, but you'll also need to apply physics principles like heat transfer, mass transfer, and fluid dynamics. Mm -hmm. And you'll also need quite a bit of mass to be able to work on chemical formulas, model the transfer of heat and mass, and simulate chemical processes. As a chemical engineer, you will most likely work in an office, in a lab, or a mix of the two. And depending on the industry, you could also be spending your time in industrial plants or refineries. Nuclear engineering. By far the most dangerous type. Well, is she going into nuclear? Come, it is time. Maybe not. I think that was a good video. All in all, when it comes to which type of engineering you should choose, here's what I will say. Don't look at a specific field. Look at what you want to do. Do you want to build things with your hands? Do you want to build actual things such as with gravel and stone or you do want to design things? Do you want to work with electricity? Do you want to code? Look at the skills or your or the traits that you want to have when you go to work things that they give you joy and let's say you, you love coding now you know that you can be an electronics engineer if you love coding you can be a software engineer but you probably shouldn't be a civil engineer or if you love building things with your hands you can be a civil engineer you can be a mechanical engineer or electronics engineer but you probably shouldn't do a software engineer so just look at things that you enjoy habits that you enjoy or topics that give you interest like whether it's physics or math and go about choosing a major based off of your already given or natural abilities and natural interest but anyways it's jovan en let me know what you think of this video and i'll see you guys on the next one peace